President Sparks, thank you so much for uh, those very warm words and, and wonderful introduction, and of course, for making Cooper Union one of the major venues for Ai Weiwei's Good Fences Make Good Neighbors. Um, Weiwei, I met you first about eight years ago. You were in New York. I just started at the Public Art Fund. You had made uh, a number of works in public space, of course, the Bird's Nest Stadium that you collaborated with Herzog and de Moron, your architectural kind of side. Uh, you had also made Remembering at the Haus der Kunst, which was an astonishing public installation of thousands of children's backpacks uh, that took the words of a mother whose child had died in the Sichuan earthquake. Uh, it was clear to me that you, your work was fundamentally involved in uh, the public sphere and engaging a broad audience. So I was excited to have the chance to meet you. You were at that time preparing uh, your installation in New York for, uh, of the Zodiac Heads that ended up being at the Pritzker Fountain across from the Plaza Hotel. Uh, so when me, we met, you were already doing that. So I, we talked about uh, sort of coming back to the idea of doing something that was a site-specific commission for New York City. So I thought, okay, you know, a couple of years we'll, we'll uh, be able to do that and follow up the, the Zodiac heads. Um, I didn't realize at the time that uh, the Weiwei would return to China and of course be put under house arrest, be detained, be abducted, be beaten, um, be under constant surveillance and really be unable to travel uh, again until he got his passport back finally in 2015. Um, at that time I went to see him in Berlin. We met in the fall of 2015 um, and re-engaged the conversation and the invitation to him to conceive something for New York City. So I, um, I also had a hunch, I guess, that where we, because you had lived, by the way, this is the remembering piece of the Haus der Kunst and the Zodiac Heads, um, because you had lived in New York City, uh, I figured that you would have a strong a strong response to the city, both as a, of course, in, interesting place to work, but as somewhere that had had a very direct kind of influence on, on you. And uh, I, I think probably doing this exhibition, from what you've told me, has also been um, a reminder of that period of your life. You've sort of unearthed photographs that you took at that time. Um, and it's really been interesting. You even kind of rediscovered a poem of your father's, Ai Ching, uh, one of China's most prominent poets who was exiled um, during the Cultural Revolution. So Weiwei really grew up having that experience of being an outsider within his own community. Um, here he is uh, with his father, of course, as a kid. Um, I thought I would just like to, uh, to read a few lines from your father's poem called New York. Standing at the mouth of the Hudson River, an entire metropolis, a huge, incomparable framework, human lives in a maelstrom of steel, steel vibrating, steel rubbing together, steel vaulting up, steel flying through, above the streets, bridge buttresses intersect one another, long bridge spans of steel stretch skyward, 
like strong forearms joining together several little islands into one greater New York. Uh, the poem goes on and maybe I'll just jump to the, the closing stanza. And the goddess of liberty is no more than a likeness standing alone on an island out in the harbour, gazing on vacantly, watching this great city. Wei Wei, how did your re-engagement with New York City uh, inspire you to, to think about and to create this project and that part of your life? Thank you. <laughs> uh, recently, I yes, it's, it's kind of funny. I come back to the city, and uh, recently I have to do uh, five, six public talks, uh, and in those talks, of course, they always have to introduce me. I have to listen about myself. <laughs> It's like a trial, <laughs> Ex exactly like a trial. You know. I, it's about my crime. Uh, and some I, I'm responsible for it, but some I'm not really. It's really, you know, history is always most mysteriously. I cannot believe I was sitting here to talk to you. Of course, and uh, Cooper Union is, uh, is my neighborhood. I used to live on 7th Street and 2nd Avenue. So it's just two blocks down. I spend uh, days, nights uh, on St. Mark's. It was, it was a very funny place, but <laughs> you know. But it, where you go, you know, you're a Lower East Side person. At that time, if people ask you where you live, as a Lower East Side. Normally, they don't ask any more about it. <laughs> Before I moved to 7th Street and 2nd Avenue, I was living on 3rd Street between A and B. There's a House Angel Club. I don't know if it's still there. But, uh, you know, it's quite a tough area. Uh, so I talk a little bit about my relations to, to, to this area. So daily I would pass them by here. And uh, I was our student for a short time in Parsons. I don't like to be in that school. I always want to be in Cooper Union. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not an advertisement for Corporate Union, it's only a, a tuition, is tuition free or somehow? So, you know, for, uh, for young men come from China, you know, tuition is always a big problem. I don't know if tuition is still free here or not. Is tuition free? No? <laughs> if it's tuition free, I can still be enrolling as a student here. <coughs> So, yeah, and uh, my only exercise is to try to push this cube. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't like sport, but every time I pass it, I would push it. <laughs> Last night, I'd come to see, adjust, you know, to see the lighting on, on these five fences. I also pushed, surprised my Swiss uh, friend. He said, you really can push it? Uh, yes. <laughs> He was so surprised. It really moved. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been restored. Yeah, but it feels the same. <laughs> okay. You're not strong enough. Uh, no, not any stronger. I, I'm, I'm, it's 30 some years past. Yeah, 30, 35 years past. Right. So, what should we talk about? It, it must be, well, here. Um, <laughs> These are some photographs that oh, you Oh, those photos took. I took in uh, 1988. Uh, that's uh, around that year, you know, the, the, there's a riot called Thompson Square Park riot. It's not far from Washington Square. 
Yes, it's on the 10th Street uh, Avenue A. So it takes some photos. Then later, uh, city have a curfew on both Washington Square and Thompson Square Park. So we, we, I, there's a lot of demonstrations. So I, I took a lot of photos at that time. And then recently, one we uh, uh, we had a plan to build uh, this. Uh, new artwork under this uh, Washington uh, arch. I never thought it, that would be a problem, but uh, that, that become, uh, uh, for one moment, uh, I thought it maybe would, would not be happy because the uh, neighbors uh, really raised questions about it. And uh, the argument is uh, it will stop their annual Christmas tree. I never noticed there was a Christmas tree. I spent over ten years here, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, that's the story. So. <laughs> we're, we're finding a, a nice alternative location in the park uh, for the Christmas tree just this year. Yeah, well, we also can decorate that uh, sculpture as Christmas. <laughs> you know, why not? I don't, you know, I don't see this is a conflict here. You know. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And Washington Square obviously has that history of protest and activism, uh, of diversity the things that in a way New York symbolized to you? That time was uh, more like a people's park. You still can pay 20 bucks for marijuana and... Uh, <laughs> they still and they, uh, But today, I don't know, it's a lot of students, much more... Uh, you can see it was empty in then. It was not so many people, but today... Yeah, people were afraid to go quite, there. Quite packed and uh, it's nice. It's uh, so much energy, a lot of sunshine there. and. Uh, it was a time, I mean, it was a very um, contested time, in a way. You uh, had uh, Reagan in the White House, you had issues, I mean, um, AIDS activism was something that was emerging at that time, obviously. Um, different kinds of protest movements. Coming from a country where you'd not been allowed to have that kind of expression, it must have, well, I'm curious what kind of impact that had on you. Well, it's, uh, you know, you, I come from a society, everything's uh, restricted, everything. And they suddenly come to a place, even you, you're dead in your apartment, nobody would care. <laughs> you know, it's just nobody would care. It's a totally, you can call it a freedom, but also uh, you also can call it something else, something else. So it's a completely different society. Yeah. Right. But New York, uh, I think for most, certainly you're know, growing up in Sydney, Australia, you know, New York always had a mythic kind of dimension for me. Also as someone interested in art, because so many great artists had worked here, made work here, um, great kind of museums of New York City were so legendary. Uh, poets like your father would write about New York City. Um, no, he writes about a lot, a lot of other places too. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, his uh, New York poetry is not a great one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a late work. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, New York is okay, you know. <laughs> A lot, a lot of super rich people here, and uh, that's really draw a lot of attention because you have really expensive shops and you have museums, really scary, and uh, you know, but a lot of a lot of poor people, uh, people in desperate situation. You see them have to rush into subway, and uh, you know they walk on streets so fast, and uh, you know it's it's not an easy city. To, to to struggle, but it's it, it's so attractive, and uh, because the energy, the the kind of power, and uh, the, maybe some opportunities here. So, as a student, 
uh, did you, how, how did your um, experience of art in the city also impact you? Did it kind of, you dropped out of art school. Um, was that because you found you could learn more about art yourself or you? Um, I, I, yeah, talk about my school experience can be very short because I only studied half a year in, in Parsons. And uh, I dropped out with no other reason except I couldn't afford the tuition, you know. So that, uh, and uh, that's, that's, I think that, uh, that's, uh, that is uh, very lucky I can drop out, actually. I, I don't have to spend so much time uh, to be educated and, uh, you know, see. Right. Yeah, but I spent a lot of time to go to galleries and museums. So I just tried to figure out why those space are so beautifully um, renovated, but nobody, not almost nobody go in those space. Mm -hmm. I was standing in front of the cam canvas or sculpture for, for a while still. You, you even feel shy to go out because you always want to wait another person to come in, you, you go out. It's completely empty, all those uh, galleries. <laughs> Yeah, I have to pretend that I have some profound meaning in front of those works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... It's difficult, you know. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I think everyone who lives here realizes what a tough place New York is to live. I mean, especially as a student or someone who doesn't have great wealth. Um, and one of the reasons people make sacrifices to live here is because of the cultural life that is literally on the city, on the streets. Um, projects like yours don't happen in other cities. And so there is, um, and even when you were here, you, you met Ginsburg and artists and poets and um, were able to experience that kind of creative community that also, you know, still hopefully um, perseveres in New York despite the gentrification and, uh, um, you know, the, the incredible sort of inequality of wealth that we see now. So, that's more. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Well, this, I mean, this is, of course, an iconic image of yours um, and an image of protest, which, of course, it's a very American one, too. Um, actually, let me just, just go back here for a second. Um, wait, wait, this is once you uh, came back to New York at our invitation to develop a project. And it actually was, um, it's been very fun to work with you on this project because, uh, well, as, as everyone realizes, Weiwei has a great sense of humor, um, has a great sort of, um, joie de vivre, um, and always kind of makes things a lot of fun. So whether it's, uh, you know, we're exploring in Queens, stopping for ice cream, um, meeting people all over the city. And it was amazing to just see how people would come up to you, uh, ask, you know, maybe say how much your work means to them, take a selfie, and, and so I, I wonder if you could reflect a little bit um, on how you thought about where you wanted to have your project in the city. Well, you have a lot of choices to make a, a work in the city, um, but you always have to think about uh, New York itself is a, is a great masterpiece. <coughs> And uh, you know, it really um, comes from uh, this I idea of a cos cosmo uh, cosmopolitan mixed uh, people or or all kind of people, religion or races come to here, and uh, you know, um, and this is a, a city probably uh, looks or feels. Uh, most 
uh, civil or democratic. Um, but of course, this is a, a city also like a, a monster. You know, it's a, it's a, I you can feel quite lonely and uh, you can feel uh, not so romantic. You know, at least at the eighties, and also has a lot of danger uh, at that kind of moment. But still, it's a, a powerful, attractive, and uh, you know, it can for young people can have a lot of. Uh, Imagination and uh, so to, how to make uh, artwork to 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 be relevant in the city is always uh, a challenge because you don't you you don't um, you know you don't the city doesn't need, really need a decorate uh, to to be decorated you know it's uh, it's already very powerful and it, it functions because as its uh, meaning you know. Uh, all the reasons for all those uh, city planning or different neighborhood and uh, the history of this city is uh, is always uh, uh, attract me. So I always want to to see how to do a work which can feel relevant uh, and is not uh, you know has some meanings in relating to. The city's history and uh, the people using this uh, and uh, the, these uh, facilities. So that's how this this work being uh, con conceptualized. Speaking of relevance, this is a slide about the rise in national borders in recent years. And when you came and uh, developed the concept for the exhibition, you'd been traveling already to refugee camps, you've been seeing, these are Instagrams of yours from Calais and other uh, refugee camps. And the motif of the fence had struck you as something you wanted to translate into a kind of sculptural language or, a, this is actually the napkin that Weiwei sketched his initial idea in a coffee shop on the Lower East Side. Um, so I'm curious, Wei Wei, just um, to hear a little bit about uh, how you took that, that idea of the fence um, and how you thought about elaborating it in, in these different forms across the city. There are these freestanding sculptural objects. Um, this, uh, in this one, for example, at the entrance to Central Park. Um, which also suggests a kind of very physical experience. You can walk inside. Um. I think the people uh, using the city um, uh, very differently. You know, people some uh, take subway or take bus. You know, from uh, different uh, locations, different borough, Brooklyn, Queens, and uh, Bronx. Manhattan and uh, you know and uh, Staten Island. So, city has different meaning only because it has a different usage, and uh, so I try to 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 concept to have a creative work or make work uh, functions in in multiple levels, and uh, talk to different kind of people, make people feel. There's something different. Something has been touched or changed, but not not necessarily to think it's a, a piece of artwork, but uh, to feel a little bit uh, difference. Uh, it's very important because we are so used to our daily life or daily practice, and uh, that little uh, difference. Um, it means a lot to to people, and um, that's that's what I want to, to to structure this work about. So this is the image uh, in Washington Square. The, you can see the, the you know we we had uh, this assignment. I would try to do something on Washington Square because it's the place I'm passing. Um, Every day in the summertime, 
um, because I have to we uh, West uh, West Village on um, West Fourth Street. Uh, that time, uh, for two summers, I was doing uh, street portrait, as uh, portrait artist, uh, sitting there. You know, it's just make drawings for people passing by. So people in New York might have an original Ai Weiwei drawing. It's an uh, early, early I made, work. I made thousands of them. I think they all throw away. <laughs> and, uh, Were, weren't people they any here good? Are they really, good? you know, it, it, yeah, it's interesting. That nobody, Were they good? Were, were they? They're you? they're just as good as uh, Matisse or Picasso. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it could be a little better, but you know, <laughs> but you know, people are blind. I wouldn't blame them. <laughs> and you know, I made those drawings, and uh, each drawing would uh, they pay me about like, fifteen. 15 bucks, of course, I don't pay tax, you know, it's just cash. <laughs> and uh, who's going to pay tax anyway? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably an illegal alien then. Yeah, I was illegal. You know, there's no place you even want to accept your tax. Or So this is work, uh, uh, when we start design, it looks uh, very different. But later, I, and I, I, and, you know, this, I understand that you cannot touch this arch. That is a very challenge. You know, you want to build something there, but you cannot touch this arch. I thought the arch is just arch. You know, it's a it's, it's a door without functional. It's I should see a little bit stupid. <laughs> but you know, that's uh, our culture, right? I mean, you're making a liar of me. <laughs> yeah. So you you have to create something without touch it. So. And also, you have to let people pass in it, you know. So it was very complicated. You also have to have a handicraft to pass in it. And, uh, you know, all kind of regulations. So that's how this work comes out. It's really not come from, comes out from creativity, but uh, from regulations. <laughs> <laughs> so is yeah, that, is that good work, or bad? Most of my work is, come, you know, <laughs> Because this is I way way here only because there's so many regulations in China or in here, and all my works are all you know most you know the hidden reason is is about uh, those regulations or so I made I made the, the the door there, but I have to find something meaningful. I cannot just cut a door there, or people will feel bad about it. So, you know, I have to make it a little bit artistic. So I said, okay, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, this, this business is very simple. So I, I but <laughs> I'm not so creative. So I look, you know, I think about ready-made. So who is my ready-made is Duchamp, you know, because he's the one created ready-made. So I use his, him as ready-made. I use that images from his uh, 1934th work about uh, surrealism. He creates this door, and uh, I think the, the writer uh, Breton, uh, you know, Andrew Breton. Andre uh, Breton. Yeah. Right. So they, they did a show about surrealism. So that was the door design. But they never made it so fancy because they have no money at that time. And it's just on paper, like a paper cut. I said, oh, this is nice. So if I put this door there, Nobody would argue argue about it. it's not artistic. <laughs> so yeah, I did it. You know, it's a simple reason I, d I did it. It's not that I like it or not, but I want. You know, it's you have to face an argument. And uh, I, I I said that's not enough. You have to polish it so people can see the reflections. It's better for them to take selfies there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always think about selfie because when you I. I you know, why I think about public art, first thing jumping into my mind is public art on, on social media or on internet, which I'm very used to it, you know, it's so easy. Now I have to do something physical. And those, those doors are very heavy. It's about uh, how many tons? 20 tons or 15 tons. It's yeah, just very, very heavy and very expensive. But uh, you know, as you have to prove yourself as artist, so you make it heavier or bigger. It's always make people say, "Wow!" You know. <laughs> so otherwise, people just 
pass it and no, without notice it, then, yeah. Oh, sorry. And well, and no. <laughs> <laughs> Just, Please carry on. Yeah. Um, you also told me this is an um, image from Shanghai, the haha, -ha, um, a kind of mirrored pavilion that. Yeah, it's true. You know, I, it's funny. Everything you did, you can find a reference somehow. You know, you, that's another, again, to prove it's not creative. In <laughs> 1930 or 20s, before the communists took over China, you know, all those Western bankers in China, they really explored China and, you know, they, they built a lot of buildings. Uh, so one of the buildings called uh, the Big World of Shanghai, which is like Disneyland at that time. So in there, there's a few mirrors, which it's not flat, but a curve. So all those farmers come to Shanghai, you know, big cities like New York at, uh, at uh, East Asia. So they would look at the mirrors, they're just standing there to laugh, ha 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 ha, you know, to laugh. And uh, people enjoy that so much. Uh, and it's people waiting online. You see those farmers in the you know, 20s, 30s, just want to see that mirror. So again, you see this, this shining mirror seeing, yeah, see, that's my image I took the, uh, yesterday or this morning. Yeah, it's uh, the same kind of effects. And and uh, I, I also did uh, um, this location in Queens. And uh, I remember this park as one summer I was selling t-shirts there. And uh, I made some money by, you know, print something on the t-shirt and sell it. And yeah, so it's a really nice park. It's very open. And, uh, you know, here all those traffic sound in, in Queens, but uh, peaceful, peaceful uh, place. So we, we designed some uh, sculpture-like Sylvie's tents, but uh, also uh, looks like tents, like, like refugee tents. But uh, I, I think it, because it's public park, it should invite people to sit on it or enjoy sunshine or children can climb on it. So, yeah. And the design for this piece changed a lot as well. I mean, in, as you say, there were a lot of, uh, I mean, even though this whole exhibition developed from concept to execution very quickly, uh, the whole design process had to have a lot of back and forth working with the regulations and what was possible. And it struck me. Yeah, I, you know, if you give me more time, I will continue. Change. <laughs> it's not. I it's that. never a final form. It always can be goes this direction or that direction. Right. So it look, you know, it's dangerous for that girl there. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you have insurance, and uh, you know, it's not a problem. <laughs> I I actually speculated, and I think you confirmed in a way that. Uh, I mean, I think one of the reasons that you're able to be very successful in this mode of doing public art is that you don't take any kind of obstacle as a problem. You immediately sort of change course. You don't waste time kind of worrying about that. And, and in the end, I think yeah, often... That's why I'm so successful because I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't have this self-indulgent most artists would have. You know, I, I, I'm really ready to change. If I don't sit here, I may have a rice pizza or, or ice cream in a nearby shop. I was very, enjoy it very much, so, <laughs> but I have to sit here. So I, I talk about the art here. <coughs> oh, is <laughs> <you're not. laughs> Yeah, you it's have to offense. invite people. If you it's don't, if you don't invite people, I'm sure they was, you know, they'll, they'll hate you. you know. Is, is, that, um, is that your personality or is that also kind of your experience of being, growing up where you were not able to express yourself directly, where you always had to think kind of around 
problems? Uh, I think that, that's, that's nice to see, think around the problems. Um, is it th because, as Duchamp said, there's no solution because there's no problem. And, uh, you know, art is uh, some kind of problem we, we create. And, uh, and uh, you know, there's many ways to do it. I, I also, you don't have to do it. So, because I'm doing it, so I have to come up with some kind of solution there. So. Right. Um, we're now looking at the piece that is, um, has been made for Cooper Union, The Five Fences. Yeah, this, um, this is really uh, something I really like to do because I passing here all the time because th these doors there, there's nobody there. It's like uh, five holes there. And for years, winter looks very, really bad there. And uh, I said, well, that would be a perfect place to have those fans because it's easy to deal with uh, uh, educated uh, university than private owners. You know, it's, it's very hard to, to, to negotiate with private owners to build anything on their you know, building. Even all those buildings are so ugly and horrible. But, but this is a perfect, perfect uh, location. And I, I, when I heard I hear Cooper Union agreed to let me do it, I was so happy because I respect Cooper Union so much. I remember one, one winter I was see one artist was selling snowballs. Uh, <laughs> yes, I was I was looking David at David Hammonds. It must be the him, you know, he, he was sitting the, uh, standing there with a few snowballs. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm selling those. <laughs> I said, uh, what, how, you know, what, I didn't see that word, but selling snowballs, you know, you know this is a nice place, this is, a, I like this space here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these are Weiwei's new snowballs. <laughs> yes. um, and uh, if it's possible, I would donate this work to Cooper Union so you can permanently stay there. <laughs> it's because I'm only worried if I take it down, where should I store it? <laughs> <laughs> but if it's there, it's obviously it's, it's quite expensive work. <laughs> <laughs> Value yes, all the time. These fences were. Well, right. I know they have to talk to their trustees or. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of meetings about it. <laughs> you don't have to answer me today. So. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after. <laughs> okay. These. Um, what about this idea of fences? filling spaces uh, that, that already exist. So they are, um, they're almost like these viral structures that fit in, in between walls, in this case, in between arches. Why, why do this rather than build a kind I, of free... I, I cannot build it in the middle of uh, Fifth Avenue or Park Avenue, it's not possible. So, you know, those are space things is available, so. And of course, the fences is not it's a serious matter. I don't know what happened to my voice. And uh, in, in, as we all know, in when Berlin Wall comes down uh, 1990 or 89, there was only 11 fences in the world, but now it's over 70 of them. And, uh, and we are building a um, a war, but now they call it fences in between U.S. and uh, Mexico, and uh, trying to push away the people from other sides of the fence. And even you have a president call those people uh, criminals or, or rapists, which is quite shocking to, to hear this kind of, you know, fences also can be friendly, but don't have to really see your 
you point fingers to others, you'll have a problem. So, yeah. Let's not talk about politics. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about it more abstractly. I, um, I understood, in a way, um, some of your thinking about this, and maybe it's only my response, um, is also about uh, the way these fences, which are power structures, in a sense, um, also find a home between existing structures. So fences can just attach themselves easily to something that already exists. It doesn't seem a stretch to think of sort of extending that metaphor to thinking about how uh, existing social structures, existing prejudices, for example, are easily attached to, uh, to, to create the kind of barriers that you're drawing attention to. One thing I like to make artists because you don't want to get in too complicated. You know, I don't have to uh, interpret my art that much. So, you know, you, I think you, you're getting a little bit sophisticated about <laughs> my... You know, it's, it's really, really about a minimal art. You can look at it, it's, it's kind of pure and uh, abstract. And, uh, yeah. And these are rooftop fences on the Lower East Side, uh, which are on private property. So there's a mix of the kind of public institutions, private property. This is the Essex Street market on the Lower East Side. The Lower East Side was important to you given its history of immigration, uh, as well as, I guess, your own personal history. Yeah, I think it also it celebrates the values of a people have rights or to, to move, to, to decide where to stay. Unfortunately, most people move only because it's necessary, because the killing, because environmental problem, famine, you know, they have to leave their home. Right. It's not a single one really you know, among all those refugees, it's, it's not by their free choice, they just have to leave. So, but uh, also, if you look at the history uh, about migrants, and uh, you know, since as long as the civiliz civilization is there, pe only because people are moving and emerging and uh, choosing a new like, locations and uh, to, 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 to mix with different culture and trying to understand it. And, and that is plays the best part of our, our culture, our novel, our poetry, uh, art. You know, it, it, it really makes uh, uh, New York as a very special place. Right. Uh, it, by the way, this work is um, all made <clears throat> through using the negative space that you've cut out of vinyl which uh, is the same technique you've used for the portrait banners that we'll see in a minute. Uh, and this is a series called Exodus, and it, it's about the kind of journeys that refugees take uh, on those kind of um, attempts to escape war, famine, um, and yeah. those, those challenges. I, I've been interested to see how this exhibition um, takes different materials from, you know, off the shelf chain link fence um, to very sort of meticulously uh, fabricated, polished elements. Um, there's a lot of invention about using the city as a platform, uh, banner between flagpoles or street um, you know, lamp posts for banners or bus shelters. Uh, why did you want to use the city's kind of infrastructure in that way? Uh, you, you, uh, you take city as a ready-made, you know, it's the easiest, cheapest way to, to make the biggest effect. And uh, of course, the, the, the banners on Essex Street was not designed as a banner was, uh, as you remember, was uh, 
fences above the the building, and uh, it was very different uh, temptation. But uh, when the calculation of the cost come out, it's quite shocking. To build the fences along right. the roof of the access street, should I say the number? Sure. It's cost about a s almost 400,000 US dollars. So of course he has union or labor or all kinds of things, but I just cannot believe that much money I can build maybe another Essex Street market in China. <laughs> so then we have to change to find a cheaper material. Of course it's nice, it turned out to be, you have to be creative only because these restrictions or problems. You know, I think all or my creativity is come from uh, uh, problems, you know. So, so I, I, I really don't want to give up the Essex Street. I think it's a very important neighborhood, a very beautiful, beautiful uh, instrument of, uh, for, for this city. So that's why we designed those banners. It turned out to be maybe, maybe $20,000. So it's, it's much cheaper, so then everybody's happier. So that's <laughs> true, you know. The, this is one of your um, bus shelters. I think uh, I love the way that you also have turned kind of what is uh, an object that's a, a barrier, um, the fence, into something that has a kind of generosity to the public as well. You've built in a seat on the kind of back of the fence, the but, top but is think about the, Who is going to see that on the back of them, you know? Bus station, well, look, but, someone but is there's here. always people sitting there. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> this is New York City, you know. Anything happens, so people need a place I was to sit. So surprised, people maybe they're tired. They, you know, they want they want to tell people I'm not going to take the bus, but I'm going to sit right. here. And you have yeah. uh, <laughs> right. It's true, and you also have the uh, images. It's really nice in really. the display ads. And make so. the you know, makes the bus uh, uh, station looks mysterious, a little bit arty. I, I know that MoMA will never take that as art, but uh, this is so much better than anything they ever accepted, you know? <laughs> you know MoMA is such a shitty place. <laughs> yeah, but they will never enjoy this. They don't know it, they just simply don't know it. They have too much money, they build fantastic buildings, but shit has been shown there, you know. <laughs> Sorry. You know. <laughs> I, you know, I just cannot control myself when, <laughs> when I talk about those art institutions. Huh? <laughs> well, I think this is also why you really love doing this public project. Because the art belongs to people, right? Right. I think you're... Um, People is the only element in the world can be arrogant, you know, not more my, you know, <laughs> forget about it. It is. Let's talk about it's, MoMA. <laughs> <laughs> I, you might be surprised, Wei Wei, they, yeah. they might come knocking. Um, so, so uh, how beautiful that is, you know. I think that, yeah, I think there is. It's not pretentious. It's not expensive. <laughs> it doesn't even need a building to contain it. <laughs> and the people don't care, they're passing, you know? And you really can ruin it, I don't care. And uh, it's only a problem later I want to donate to somebody, and maybe nobody wants it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure things have changed since the days of drawing the portraits on 7th Ave. Since this is my uh, almost last talk before I move out to New York, so I don't care. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wei Wei's been, you're working incredibly hard with this exhibition, with his film, Human Flow being Yeah, released. the film is a really interesting topic. Uh, it's true. It's true. Human Flow. Uh, well, 
tomorrow or tomorrow, start to have right. a, a show in the city theaters. Please go to see that film. It's a serious piece. I, you know, it's much better than any artworks I have made. So please, just if anybody, you know, still after this uh, talk, not hate me, <laughs> then go to see a theater. You know, it's it's, it's nice in you know, the theater. It's it's actually extraordinary to, I mean, one that you've basically done this extraordinary feature film, this citywide exhibition in three hundred plus sites, all in the same short space of time. Uh, it's it's sort of you're incredibly prolific. I can make it even shorter or make it bigger. You know, it's just uh, it's easy. Be an artist is the easiest job in the world. So, but you also you have um, you have a great team as well. Um, uh, team doesn't matter. You always can organize another team. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it, it, it's the truth. It's, <laughs> so laughable, but it's the truth, you know. I respect my team. Sorry, any, <laughs> any one of them there, I, I respect them as you know. It's like my family, so family doesn't matter to us. Well, you said <laughs> right. Families have to be a bit dysfunctional. Uh, this my mom would never understand. I made those things can be called art. <laughs> yeah. What about your dad? He passed away a long time ago. But would he have thought this was? I don't think so. He, 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 he belongs to something more, much more profound. You know, he's a poet. He didn't see his language in a way I admire. So, being an artist is much easier. I, I have to disagree. Um, <laughs> during, because I know how difficult it is to do a successful public art piece. It's yeah. really, really hard. And to have pulled it off in so many different ways all over the city is, is but this astonishing. piece here is very yeah, hard I wanted because to... really put it right next to Trump Tower. That's really hard, you know. This is, this is one of two hundred different lamppost banner portraits that are the faces of Ellis Island immigrants from the nineteenth century, famous refugees. The projection is really bad. Nobody can see anything. <laughs> Okay. It's we're, too we're bright, you know. So forget about the projector, it's bad. <laughs> um, I mean, Cooper Union doesn't have a right projection. <laughs> yeah. My God. I think that I can see us over there is much clearer, but. Uh, That's about us. It doesn't, doesn't matter, you know. I know. This is more important right. to talk about art, you know. Yeah. It's really bad, sorry about no. <laughs> Well, everyone will have to go see these works in person. Um, That's the purpose, right? That is, that is the purpose. Um, and these, some of these images are also uh, contemporary refugees that Weiwei has taken on his iPhone, or members of his studio have done portraits at, at different camps. And, and these are all over the city in every borough. Uh, and it's a really fun way to, to explore the city, actually, seeing this exhibition. Um, Wei Wei, I think we probably uh, time have time for some questions. Okay. Nearly time to stop. Time is always short. <laughs> um, I think uh, we, we have a couple of microphones, I think. Um, here, actually, they're bringing them bringing them here and setting up. Um, so if, uh, if people who would like to ask a question could, could come and maybe just um, form a line sort of behind the microphones, we'll, we'll be able to take a few questions. Yes, yeah. please. Hello. Um, what is your impression of 798, the art zone in Beijing? What's the question? I, I, can you what is your impression of the art zone, 798, in Beijing? 
There seems to be like a big art zone right now in Beijing. But uh, most people don't know what you're uh, asking about. Of course, I can tell you. But uh, you know, you you need a one word or one sentence or. <laughs> it, I I would say it's it's a pretty fake. You know. Yeah. Is that okay. Yes. Okay. That that was the impression that that we got. So I just didn't know what your impression was of it. Yeah. It's a fake place, you know. <laughs> I try to make short. I, I spend too much time on MoMA, you know. Hello, um, I'm from Japan, and I just happen to know a poet who is 86 years old, who was a friend of your father. So I'm going to. Uh, uh, send him some impression of what I heard today to him. He's 86 years old. But anyway, my question is, from all the places in the world, you know, after leaving China, of all the places, what was your motivation to now choose Berlin as your primal artistic um, uh, I, in a place? Yeah, sorry. I, I never, uh, I never really put myself a, a position I can free, freely choose uh, uh, places. You know, almost never happened in my life. I still uh, hold a Chinese passport. I was detained for years, uh, uh, not allowed to travel. Or, and uh, when I did get the my passport. Berlin uh, Art University and already gave me a professorship to teach. I even I hate the campus, but I, you know, it's an opportunity you 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 can be functional again. You know, uh, as artist, basically you you just help people your artist, and uh, it's you don't have a job, you don't have an obligation. You know, you don't have to create another. Peaks, so teaching is a profession. So I accepted it, and also German has made a, a tremendous effort mm -hmm. in every aspect to to try to risk risk me, and uh, they keep uh, asking Chinese government why this guy cannot come out to teach. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I studied in Berlin in the eighties. Hmm? So I studied in West Berlin in the 80s myself, so okay. I, I think of Berlin is a wonderful place. Thank you. Thank you. So we have another question, this gentleman. Hello. Uh, hi, I'm a Cooper Union student. Hey. Um, I was curious how uh, New York has influenced you in terms of fashion and your navigation of social scenes. I noticed that you're wearing uh, Nikes, I think, Air Force Ones. Uh, my friends and I were really interested in that and really appreciated that you came on the stage in sneakers rather than dressed as dapper as this gentleman to your, your right. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you know I, I worry about that all the time. Like, you know, I'm, I'm young, I'm, you know, this young artist person and I'm just curious how you've like navigated figuring out what shoes and clothes to wear. <laughs> you know, like it's a hard question, you know, like Thanks. Is there a question you, there? Uh, <laughs> how did you get the idea to wear Nike shoes? Oh. Um tell the truth, I got these shoes from a designer who who gave to me, uh, who is in, in Berlin, as a very good designer. And uh, so I, I, I don't like to wear this, this kind of shoes, but uh, I start, when I start to wear it, I was in, during the sh uh, sh shooting the film, in all different kind of camps. Uh, on the shore, you have to step in the ocean, and then you go to the very muddy areas uh, in all those different nations, about at least 10, 15, uh, locations and uh, after one year the shoes still very durable uh, it surprised me my 
you know, my leg is almost broken, but the shoes is. <laughs> <laughs> so one day, this designer we met in the coffee shop. He said, "That's my design." I said, "Okay, I need another pair." <laughs> so I got a new pair, <laughs> and they're free. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And, Yes, on the it's side. nice to be famous. You can get the free Nike shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Hi, um, I was wondering why you decided to paint pictures of people from Ellis Island beside uh, refugees from Syria. Like, what was your intention when you made that choice? The question was why you chose to put, uh, say historic immigrants from Ellis Island next to contemporary refugees from Syria, for example. <coughs> About immigration, <coughs> sorry. I think it's a historical issue. It's not just started today. Uh, as we all understand, New Yorkers or people from the United States or people from many, many nations are basically immigrants of, uh, from somewhere. In, this is the truth, and uh, and a lot, a lot of refugees, uh, mi early immigrants, uh, had a great contribution to, to culture, and uh, you know they, they always, uh, people has courage, have vision, or have dream to to, to to change their life, and uh, and to to make some kind of special effort. So, so all those refugees I have I have met, I have deep respect uh, for them. They are, I, I used to call them heroes, you know, if you really can take a children and, uh, to, to, to go to this very dangerous sea and a journey and go to a location, have very different kind of culture, language or religion, it's, it's extremely difficult. You can see the, their, their future is, is almost unthinkable. It's much more difficult than I, I would have, you know, it's, not, it's really uh, crazy. So I, yeah, we choose some historical, more uh, so-called permanent type of uh, well-known refugees, the face, and the mix with uh, the images from uh, the, the Ellis Island. Yeah, Ellis Island, and also a lot of photo shots uh, from my refugee, uh, over a hundred thousand refugee uh, images. This mic has some problem. So, yeah, and uh, I think uh, it's just in some kind of random. It's it become some kind of traces in the city. So people uh, maybe find some face recognizable, some face uh, foreign, and uh, some faces even look suspicious or question questionable. But they all the same. They 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 have no difference from us. And uh, I think uh, they deserve to have their face in this metropolitan city. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hello. Uh, just want to say thank you for spending your time here. I know you're very busy. Um, so I recently went to a talk that was led by the art director for the Women's March in Washington, and she said that. As a creative, it's our responsibility to use our work for good. So my question for you is, what advice do you have for young artists looking to use their work for good and to cause change, especially given what's going on in our country today? I still don't know what's okay. <laughs> oh, advice for young artists who want their work to make change for good. Um, this is a very difficult question because you, you may ruin a generation's life, you know, if you give the wrong advice. <laughs> My advice, anyway, nobody would listen to it. Quit, quit the school and uh, do some traveling. Go to the area you would never imagine or dream of, you know. So, you know, I don't know, if you don't pay the tuition, of course you stay in the school. Pay tuition, may why well, you have to stay in school. I mean, for spend that money can bring you much rich uh, experience. Sorry, 
<laughs> no, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, on this side. Hello. Hi. My name is Vixie. Um, I'm just wondering, in regards to your new Gates series, why did you choose? Are you? Let me rephrase this. Are you keeping in mind deterioration of the Gates in its creation, or? Do you plan, or are you imagining that it will stay this clean? Okay. So I, I think the question is about uh, whether you... Uh, so, sorry, I have a such good <laughs> translator. <laughs> <laughs> are you concerned about how the work will be affected by the weather or being out in the public space? Uh, no, you know, you know, everything in pub happens in public space is um, uh, how those works through the, you know, this, I never worry about it. I only worry that my work will not do some uh, harsh to the surrounding or environment, you know, nothing can really damage your work. So, you know, I even drop a hundred vases and it, and never really damaged, you know, it's just broken. <laughs> it's, it's the most famous vase uh, from the Han period now. Yeah, so. Hi, Eddie. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, over here. But you have so many people <laughs> wait online. We, we just, yeah, maybe we could, we probably have five minutes. Uh, okay, I'll left. try to make it quick. Hi, my name is Ben, and I, I come from France, and um, so you name your uh, exhibition Good Fences Make Good Neighbors. Um, I want to know what is your definition of good fences because I come from a country and I live now in a country where human rights are respected. So you have been surrounded with different fences than mine, like physically and mentally. So I want to get your opinion of what is good fences and how can art change bad fences towards better fences, whether they're physical or mental? There's no good fences. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. I wanted to say I like really respect your practice and you seem like a really chill guy. So I wanted to ask if before you leave if I could like smoke you out. You know? I mean in reference to your comments on Washington what? Square. What is the Washington? Um, I, <laughs> I'm very old fashioned. I never talk to people in this distance. You know, I have to, you know, this is the right dissertation part, so you just tell me what it is. I, I think you were just propositioned in some kind of way. Uh, yes. I'm not sure how to follow that. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for your advice earlier. I'm a designer from the Royal College of Art in London, so I, I really hear what you said earlier about traveling. Um, but I was interested in hearing more about this, this recent piece here in New York, and what is the emotional response, but also the, the sort of physical response you want to evoke in people. You're, you're an artist and an activist. What do you want people to do after they experience these, these pieces? out on the streets, in the public? What I want people to do? <laughs> what, is, what is the reaction you want to evoke? About what? About From the work. How do you want people to react? To my work? Yeah. I, I think they should just forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I don't have uh, much uh, expectations, you know. The truth. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for wasting your time. <laughs> um, 
So we, I think this might be the last uh, two questions. So we, this gentleman here. Thank you very much for uh, coming. It's, I, I'm so happy to hear that you used to live at 7th and 2nd. I used to live there too. It's crazy. Um, I wanted to ask about China uh, and what do you think. I mean, we hear in the media that Xi Jinping and the, the new Chinese you know, efforts that he took power in 2012 has cracked down a lot on the arts and culture. And it seems to have been the case. I wanted to hear from you from first hand experience. Do you feel that it's dramatically worse under Xi Jinping than previous? Uh, Chinese administration. Uh, you talk about the the politics in China. Yeah. I I would say there's no difference between each generations of leaders in China, and uh, they're communist. They never believed uh, to share power, or they never really give uh, trust their people. They never let them vote. They don't have an independent judicial system. They don't have a freedom of speech. They don't have a free press, and the army belongs to the party. So, if you all have all those things, you have a clear structure about uh, what China is about. So, it's really about how to maintain the power, and uh, you know the power have a little bit different characters, but. This really has nothing to do with people, nothing to do uh, with this nation's future. It's um, you know, it's a family business. Great, thank, thank you. you very much. And the last question here, yeah. sir. Uh, I just wanted to ask: uh, Do you play video games? Do I what? Do you play video games? V video games. Yeah. And I... If you do, then what's like your favorite video game? <laughs> I I played very little. I how to call this? Uh, I even don't uh, remember the names of the video games. But my son plays all the time, and uh, you know I I see all uh, almost many of my friends are playing. So I I don't I never played that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs>